Hey everyone, today we are talking about One Point Wonders in Grim Dawn. So, real quick, for anyone that doesn't know what a One Point Wonder ability is, it's an ability that you put one skill point in, thus making it a One Point Wonder. And in this video, we're going to be covering the real, like, One Point Wonder abilities, and a couple One Pointers that are useful to throw spare skill points at. I know not everyone likes the concept of throwing single skill points and abilities here and there, but... I support it, I do it a lot, and I think at the expense of just throwing a skill point at an ability, you can get a lot of value added to a character, and it's not a big investment. So we're going to start with the Arcanist, which is my personal favorite tree, then the Demolitionist, then we're going to go through um, Nightblade, then Soldier, then um, Occultist, then Shaman, and I'm going to point out all the abilities that I found valuable as both one point wonders and just sort of one pointers that are handy and I think the king one point wonder ability is mirror Varactes because for one point you get three seconds of complete invulnerability where you can still take your actions and the enemies can't harm you it's also great for an escape it's great if you just need to hit the oh poopy button and then heal it's it's one point just gets you this great shield this great bit of protection and if you choose to invest in it you can, because it will reduce the cooldown between uses and increase the amount of damage the shield reflects. And that's something else I want to note real quick. One pointers can be more than, you can invest more than one point in them, and it'll just make what they do better. And there's nothing wrong with either sticking with them as one pointers, or putting lots of points in them. Another great one for the Arcanist is Arcane Will. When you drop below 70% health, you get a huge damage boost and some energy regen. And Arcade Will might be an ability worth leveling up in the future depending on how enemy damage works. But right now, it just works great as on its own. And no matter what, I think whatever you're combining with your Arcanist is going to drop below 70% health a lot. And you can actually, and what I do with my Aether Rake character here is I actually actively pay attention to when this bonus procs and then I'll, I'll like, pop Mirror Varactes to not take any damage while preserving this buff. It's a really handy, really nice passive ability. And that's another thing. A lot of passives do end up being one-point wonders, just in my opinion, in this game. Another handy one is, El is Iskander's Elemental Exchange, because for one point you get some elemental damage, you get some energy leech, you get some conversion into elemental damage, and you get energy regen. This is a great ability because not only is it like a good suite of things and it becomes a better suite of things if you go with overload which is chance to inflict an elemental burn and flat percent elemental damage not flat damage percent elemental damage but also elemental balance gives you some crit damage and then percent on your elemental burns so not only is it a great suite of abilities it's easy to actually get this leveled up a lot because there's the item Crushing Will and the item Mantle Looping Eye, which give plus one and plus two, respectively. So you can easily, in my case, this character would get it up to six points. That's like halfway until it's max level. So it's actually a really great ability to just throw a point in, and you'll, as an Arcanist, you'll probably end up getting a lot of points put into it just through your items. Um... Let's see. Electra's Flash Freeze. Another great one-pointer. Uh, it's a one-pointer, and if you invest in it, it becomes a really crazy ability. Because on its own, as a one-pointer, you can actually freeze a small area of enemies directly around you, and you can use it to get away. You can use it like Mirror Varactes, where it's sort of a, oh no, dink, and then it's up. Or, if you put points into it, it becomes like a screen-freezing ability, because it's meter radius is increased per point. And Electra's Flash Freeze is a great example of an ability where one point works and leveling it up just makes it work better in what it does. And I also consider Kalidor's Tempest with Wrath of Agravex to be a one pointer as well, even though it's technically two to three points you're putting into it, because of its knockdown ability. And I actually use it more than Electra's Flash Freeze. And I'm using it for this build in the, in the same mode where it's, I pop it, and it just knocks everything knockbackable back. 
and um, it deals a chunk of damage, and it's the two damage types my character happens to be using. So, um, I actually consider it a nice little bomb that can create mitigation chances for you by knocking things, knock, knocking down enemies. You can knock down a lot of enemies in this game. And then lastly, we have Devastation. Now, if you've gone all the way into Arcanist, Devastation is actually a really great one-point ability. Because this guy has one point in it, and he can use it to just clear out a group of enemies because it deals so much damage on its own. And um, I think that I think that you could invest in it as well and make it a really, really big bomb. Um, but it's just it's great if you have fire and or aether damage and you're this far in Arcanist, just throw a point in it and you get an AoE. That works just awesomely to clear out groups of enemies. Now for one pointers um, as modifiers, I do highly recommend a point in conversion. If you've gone that if you've gone that deep into the Arcanist tree, definitely throw a point in conversion because you'll get um, a lot of reductions to durations of things that are nasty. Uh, specifically, the, the slow resistance is nice to have, but also reducing stuns, freezes. I haven't encountered Petrifies in this game. Makes me a little afraid to think about. But um, whenever those show up, it would definitely be nice to have that. But also, for Reckless Power, one point in Ascendance provides you with these bonuses. But also, if you do a lot of group play, you get a, short, a sort of short-term aura out of this ability, which is really nice to have. Okay, and the Demolitionist side of things. Flame Touched and Temper, I consider one-pointers as well. Not really one-point wonders, but they're great to have as providing you a small bonus for minimal skill point investment to Fire and Lightning, but also to Physical Internal, dra internal Trauma Damage, Burn, and Armor. There's also some gloves that give plus, plus one to both of them. I think it might actually be plus two to Flame Touched, but yeah, um... They they're really nice. They're really nice, you know, suite of abilities. And I'm gonna say that again for one other ability in this game. Also, blast shield is nice to give you some bonus, um, kind of pseudo resistance to pierce and fire. You take a little pierce and fire damage, and you suddenly get damage absorption against those two elemental types. Um, forever. <laughs> There's no end to how long that lasts until it's actually used up. And then, I would also say, this is sort of a four-point investment, so it's kind of a, a pseudo one-point wonder, but one point on Canister Bomb with three points in Concussive Bomb, you have an AoE stun that works great. And um, it's the main reason I went to Sorcerer with this character. I'd also recommend Ulzen's Wrath. Um, Vindictive Flame works as a one-pointer, but you get a lot of value out of it if you put points into it. Specifically defensive value in my case. But uh, Ulzen's Wrath is kind of a one-pointer add-on in my opinion. Because you can end up, when it procs, it reaches out and shocks enemies. And if you have elemental damage built up a little bit, that lightning damage is actually not insignificant. It's actually a nice little chunk of damage. And that burn damage is nice to have as well. And I think that just about does it for one-pointers here. I don't know about the big one. <laughs> um, that probably is a one-pointer as well. No, no, I'm looking at it. But you could probably focus on it if you really wanted to. Okay, next up, we are going to do the Blademaster classes. The Knight, Blade, and Soldier. Alright, so we have our Blademaster here, and the Knight, Blade, One Point Wonders, or just One Point Abilities. Definitely the Wonder would be Blade Barrier. I'm not using it in this character, but it's like Mirror Varactes, where you pop it when you're about to incur pain, and uh, you, you basically get a three second shield, and then you heal for a lot as well. And I actually should use it on this character. Oh no, the reason I'm not on this character is he has so many abilities already. It would be too difficult to have the it's too difficult to have the fingers that dexterous. But I do I do recommend Blade Barrier as a one point wonder for Night Blades. Blade Trap is also a one point wonder if you're this deep in the Night Blade. Because you can Um the the duration for it is independent of the skill points put into it so you can actually throw the blade trap out and it will hit a group of enemies and then 
hold them there. So if you're if you're fighting up close with a bunch of guys, you could throw a blade trap out and stop a group that's incoming, or you could throw it out to deal a chunk of damage. Anatomy of Murder also works as a one point wonder that can be built up because you get bonus damage reverse humans, which is a really common enemy type in the game, and you get percent cunning, which is you know a stat that's handy for pretty much everyone except spellcasters, but. Um, if you need a little more cunning, you can actually get it with a one-point investment. I think it starts at like 3%. So that's about the amount of cunning you can get off of an item just for the cost, just for one skill point. Phantasmal Armor can also be a one-point wonder. It provides a lot of small benefits at one point and can be increased later for more defenses. Veil of Shadow and the Occultist ability Curse of Frailty often end up having one point thrown in them and then you you go for completely leveling up the modifier. Um, if I were doing a cold build or a poison acid build or a very pierce heavy build, I would consider doing that with this character because this is also a toggled passive. And toggled passives are great because they will... Um, you flip them on and you get the, the benefit of the suite of bonuses. It's going to be said one more time, I think. On the soldier side of things... Markavian's Advantage, Zohan's Technique, Fighting Spirit, and if you're using a Shield or Two-Hander, Mainer's Will are all really handy passives um, when they when they proc. Because Markavian's Advantage and Zohan's Technique are going to proc when you're doing your basic attacks. And when they do, you just deal a bigger chunk of damage for you know a small point investment. When Fighting Spirit procs, you get, you know... Total damage, crit damage, and, and offensive ability, just for free, on you know on this character in this character's case, twelve percent of the time. And Mainer's Will is a great little heal that can happen when you drop that low, and if you're tank your character, your health is actually going to go down slower, so you can actually time and predict when this is going to happen. And I do that with my Arcanist and Arcane Will. And you can do that with this to sort of meter out whether or not you should use a potion or not. But also, um, military conditioning, veterancy, decorated soldier, and scars of battle are all really nice passives that, if you have, you know, plus one to soldier skills or plus one to all skills, aren't bad to throw a point into. This guy didn't need the physique reduction, but if you need to, you know, meet some physique requirements, just throwing a point in veterancy and maybe having a plus one or plus two to it can actually get you a lot of um, new armor options. Military conditioning just gets you a lot of health and defense, as does decorated soldier, which gets you some resistances, and uh, scars of battle gets you uh, reductions, and um, actually more armor absorption. For oh, I forgot uh, one pointers that are good add-ons. Um, I would also say shadow dance and possibly elemental awakening if it suits your build. Um, are handy sort of one-point add-on modifier abilities. Um, oh yeah, Amaresta's Blade Burst is actually handy as well because of that chance to freeze enemies. If you're using if you're using Lethal Gambit, Amaresta's Blade Burst can actually provide you with some mitigation with that freeze. Oh, and uh, a one-pointer in Ring of Frost, a one-point add-on, um, makes this sort of a tinier Electra's Flash Freeze. Add-ons on the soldier side, the only one I've ever found useful for just throwing a point in. Um, well, actually, Blitz. Oh, yeah, right. Shadow Strike and then Blitz are also one-pointers because they let you move extremely fast um, <clears throat> to a target. And that's helpful for closing distance, for moving around, and they actually deal not bad damage on their own. And then, you know, you could throw a point on blindside to give it more benefits when you zoom into enemies. Same thing with Nightfall. If you go really deep on the uh, Nightblade tree, Nightfall actually is quite a nice option to have. But um, aside from those, I think the only thing for a one-pointer I've really got a huge value out of is Fighting Form. With I have a, a Battle Mage that uses Cadence as his main attack, and having one point in Fighting Form means it hits in a burst. And that's just really handy to have to have happen because you'll hit groups of enemies for your cadence damage. 
Also, if you have a shield, Overguard's actually a nice one-pointer as well. Sort of in the same vein as uh, um, Mirror of Heroctes and Blade Barrier. And actually, I'm going to point out right now that a lot of times you'll have modifiers where you can just throw a point at it, and it provides a small bonus to the ability. That's that's handy. Okay, next up is going to be the two conjurer classes, the occultist and the shaman. <laughs> oh, perfect placement there. So, <clears throat> I'm going to note here that sometimes your build will actually determine whether or not something's worth that one point. And in this case, this character doesn't really need Solail's Witchfire with second right. But Solail's Witchfire, this is the last time I'll say it, provides a nice suite of bonuses. In this case, it's pretty much all damage. But, um, yeah, these toggled passives are just really nice abilities. And honestly, I, I think the toggled passives are, um, they are definitely worth the one point if it really does suit your build. And, um, yeah, they're just really, really nice. And a lot of the toggled passives are like that. Doombolt is kind of the occultist devastation <laughs> in that one point, and you get a giant chunk of vitality and chaos damage. And you also reduce have, have the chance to reduce the enemy's health. It's it's just a really nice, just throw a point in here if you're that deep in the class, and you have the damage types, and you just, boot, done. Well, not done, but boot, ow, damage. But uh, I don't think the Occultist actually has a lot of other ones. These are your standard rules for add-ons, um, for modifiers. But uh, I personally like throwing a point or five in this case into Emberclaw to give your Hellhound like this sweeping attack. And I also like throwing one point in Mend Flesh because having your Raven, your, your familiar sit there and heal you is actually really nice. Curse of Frailty, like, um, what did I say it was? Veil of Shadow, that's right. Curse of Frailty, like Veil of Shadows, often throw a point in Curse of Frailty and that 50% movement speed reduction is great. And then you'll put 10 points on Vulnerability, or in Veil of Shadow's case, uh, Knight's Chill. If it's if the damage types are supported by your build, and it's actually a really nice debuff to just hit the enemies with. But otherwise, I don't actually think... The others are what I would consider one-pointers. And then on the Shaman side, it's limited as well. Pretty much to Mogdragon's Pact. And Mogdragon's Pact is... Um, it's a nice aura that gives you health and energy regen, which is always helpful. And then one point on Heart of the Heart of the Wild will give you percent health. And then the, the two reductions are nice, but that percent health is really, really nice. So if we actually look at this character and we pop it, I mean, we get like 400-ish health. And that's all we, like, more health is always good to have. Otherwise, I don't really think there... Like, it's all the standard rules for, like, one-point add-ons. I don't really think there's anything that's, like, a one-point wonder otherwise. I think I have one-point primal bond. But, um, I, I would actually want to level that up later. Okay, so that will cover... That more or less covers what I think are the, the really nice one-point wonders and one-point abilities in this game um, at this current point in time. With Devotion coming out soon, that may totally change. And I'm going to use this as an example. Let's say you have something that is an on-attack ability. Well, this character doesn't actually have a lot of attacks of their own. So if there's an on-attack ability I'd want for this character, maybe I'll take it throw one point in Devouring Swarm. Because I could use it, not for its damage, but I could use it for proccing Devotion abilities. And we're going to have to really wait and see if... This whole concept of a lot of one point wonders and one point, just one point abilities, is going to change in the near future due to the way devotion works. It's something to think about. But for right now, um, those are what I would say are the really nice one pointers. And um, they're the one pointers I tend to go for when I build. So thank characters. everyone for watching this game guide, art video, instruction pamphlet reading, recipe instructions, or manifesto. It really means a lot that you guys stuck around this long to to watch this video and I'd like to ask you to please uh, subscribe or or hit like or comment below um, 
likes and comments uh, directly affect my, my self-esteem. Um, so uh, more is better. And if you really like what I'm doing with my channels, uh, you can check out my Patreon. You could also check out my non-gaming channel. Links above. And you can also check me out on my social media places, Twitter and Tumblr. And all of that is Wolf Overclocked. So thanks again so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you guys next time.